Hello everyone, uh, what we have here in front of us is the Intel DC 3217IYE, which is the next unit of computing, or NUC, Intel NUC is what they're calling them. Uh, as they say on the front, it's the shape that fits the future. Uh, it's uh, one of these ultra small form factor PCs, all in one box. Uh, you just have to add in MSATA uh, drives onto it and memory, uh, Wi-Fi, anything else you want to do. What you get is the box. Uh, power brick and uh, the processor. Uh, so what I'm going to do is give you an unboxing of this and we'll take a look and see what we've got inside. So here we go with the box first of all, here's the front. It says, you know, the shape of the shape that fits the future. We've got Intel inside Core i3, Intel desktop board as well, the, the special Nook board. Uh, what we've got is just a series of Patent warnings and all that kind of stuff on the side, on the other side, similarly just some more information, QR code information, um, superior processing and graphics, Stun stunningly small form factor and advanced technology, is what they're saying here. Okay, and if we look at the back, so let me just uh, try and get this um, focused in correctly. Okay, so the shape that fits the future, superior processing, graphics, visible smart third generation Intel Core processors delivering amazing performance and visually stunning graphics, stunningly form form, uh, stunningly, stunningly small form factor, uh, that is 4.5 inches by 4.4 inches by 1.5 inches, and unlocks a world of potential design applications from digital signage and kiosks to digital content players and portable innovations. Advanced technology, the Nook features two SO DIMM connectors for expandability of up to 16 gig of RAM, Two PCIe mini card connectors for flexible support for wireless and SSD configurations, BIOS Vault technology, fast boot technology, Intel Visual BIOS, and Intel Anti Theft technology. So, what we can see as well, it does tell us on the bottom included in the kit is the Intel desktop board, the D32, sorry, D3217GKE, a Visa bracket and power adapter. What's needed is the SO DIMM memory, an MSATA drive, wireless module if you want one, and an AC power cord, which is really strange. We'll get onto that in a second. So they give a little bit more information saying that we've gone small, so you can dream big, blah, 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 more corporate spiel. And, and you can see Intel wireless display technology, Windows 8 compatible, it's got HDMI. And uh, what we can see on the back of the box, because there's multiple versions of this particular uh, Nook. This is the first generation Nook. There is a second generation Nook due out in the next couple of months, I believe, with uh, faster Core i5 and i7 processors. Of course, the chips that are in here are mobile-based processors rather than your fully-fledged desktop uh, processors because they'd be way too hot. Uh, on this particular one, we get an Ethernet port, two HDMI, two USB, and the power, and there's another USB on the front. Um, there is another version which sacrifices the Ethernet port and one of the HDMI ports, I believe, and gives you a Thunderbolt port, but I wanted the Ethernet port on this one. Uh, primarily because it will be used as a media box, uh, we use an XBMC. So let's open the box and uh, yeah, here we go. So if I uh, open the box you'll hear. So you can see on the bottom here they've got a little light sensor that picks up when the box is open and closed and gives you the Intel logo. And that isn't really annoying at all is it? But hey, you know, I guess uh, they liked it. It's a very well made box, very sturdy, sturdy cardboard. Uh, so we get inside Intel Next Unit Computing Kit, a description kit which I guess tells you about how to install everything. Okay, usual stuff how to install, how to open the device. It's very easy to open by the looks of it. You can see there in port section one, it just says, uh, I think there's four screws, and then it just pops off. Um, which I'll do in a second and have a look inside the nook itself. Uh, okay, so we can put that to one side. Some information on where to get BIOS and drivers uh, for your nook. Right, so here's the power brick that they give you, and they're not wrong, it's literally just the power brick. Uh, and it requires a three pong plug adapter, which they don't give you which is nice so luckily I had one lying around but it's one of these uh, and then obviously for your own plug socket depending on the region that you live in the world um, surprising that they don't give you one of them a bit annoying I guess but you have to order one as well when you order the, the Nook some Visa bracket screws the Nook itself which we'll put aside 
Core i3 sticker, which is great, and the Visa mount bracket as well if you wanted to stick it on the back of your monitor or television. So, put that to one side, and here's the nook itself. It's very, very, very small. Very, very nice piece of kit. Um, I have to say, it feels sturdy, feels strong. It's like a metal edge, a brush metal edge finish on the edges here. Uh, plasticky on the top, which obviously has this piece of plastic on it, which I can lift off to reveal. Ta da! Kind of br clear plastic on the top. Uh, we've got the power button and obviously an LED indicator for our disk activity. Uh, I left that in there before, put that one side. That's the USB on the front. Nothing on the sides. On the back, you've got the air outlets on the top. Uh, there's a Kensington key lock. Your Ethernet ports, two HDMIs, quite wide as two HDMIs. Not quite sure. Uh, I guess you could obviously do multi monitors, but hmm, okay, fair enough. Um, two uh, USBs and the power. I suppose if you're going to use it as a desktop and you'd had multiple monitors, you could use it that way. It has the chip inside it is um, a dual core, hyper threaded Core i3 processor um, with a maximum clock speed of 1.8 gigahertz. It also features the onboard uh, Intel HD 4000 graphics, which, as this is an Ivy Bridge chip, is currently the the top of the range graphics chip uh, that's available. That's uh, available from Intel. Um, the next Haswell chip will feature a new GPU, which will be faster. Um, but the 4000 is uh, a pretty decent chip um, for what you need to do. Um, okay, and on the other side we've got the screw points here and here. We've got some air vents there. The screw points, more information about the nook itself. But there you go. That's, I mean, it's, it's absolutely tiny. Let's, uh, if I put it in comparison with a Blu-ray disc, which you can see here in lengthwise, um, it's obviously a lot uh, thicker uh, than a Blu-ray disc. Let's see if I can just get you that. But it is tiny, four inches by four inches by one and a half inches. So, yeah, for the power that you're getting inside it, it's uh, very impressive. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, start it. Actually, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll open it up first and we'll have a look inside. So I'm just going to pause the video for now and uh, I'll take this apart. Okay, here we have the uh, the nook taken apart. It was quite simple actually. Um, let me just put this one aside. There's four screws, which we highlighted earlier on the back of the box itself. Uh, they're all in place so they don't fall out, uh, which is quite nice. You can see it's quite a sturdy unit, all metallic uh, chassis inside here, um, and yeah, it was just a simple matter of just unscrewing those, and this pops off. The actual edge that we were talking about earlier, the metal edge, uh, this pops off as well, this lifts straight out of the nook, and here is the inside of the nook itself. So again, there's the top, which you would see, and we have inside there, which is underneath the actual motherboard, is the fan and uh, the processor obviously and to take that out would obviously require some sc screw holes there and there and screw them and you could take that out quite simply but it looks like there's only two that hold it in which is interesting um, we've got two SO dim slots here so which one is taken up there's four gig RAM that I've added into uh, the nook itself uh, let me just put that on the screen a bit better um, so there's four gig on this there was the Socket the screw there and the screw there to, to, to actually take the motherboard out of the nook itself if you wanted to. There's the Ethernet port, which you can see, and on here is the uh, SATA M SATA um, SSD that uh, that's attached. If you can just make out underneath, there is a space where there is another slot where uh, you could fit a wireless adapter, and you've got the antenna cables here for a, wire, a Wi Fi adapter if you wanted to. I'm not going to be using them, so I haven't added one in. But again, you can see just how compact this little unit is, and obviously, the metallic chassis and the metallic edges that uh, go around are obviously used to uh, to help in the distribution of heat away from the device itself. Um, so yeah, it's all very, very impressively made. I must admit, for the size of it. So I'll quickly put it back together again uh, if I can figure that out. So this edge went over the side of this. Okay, and I presume it was this way. You can just see how simple that was to uh, put that together. Four screws. I 
I'm actually really impressed by this device. Um, I know that the the next this is the first generation look, and the next generations are coming out in the next. Well, they're due to be announced, I believe, by Intel in the next month or two. Uh, obviously, this is April 2013 that I'm doing this video. Um, but this for this type of form factor is is fantastic. I think it's really nice to see such a powerful little device in such a small confined space. It doesn't seem to have any heat issues that were are well doc documented or known of. And um, you know the TDP usage is I think it's about 17 watts on the CPU alone. So uh, add a little bit more, maybe I can't imagine this be using more than I don't know 30, 40 watts, maybe um, if that. So having that much power in such a small little device that you can use as a media center or a streamer or whatever else, a full on desktop if you wanted to install Windows, you can install Windows 8, Windows 7, whatever, it will all work. There are drivers there from Intel. Um, you know, it's easy enough just to attach an optical drive via USB if you wanted to or boot off USB stick. Uh, so yeah, I have to say really, really impressed by this. Um, so what I'll do is I will just get this set up again. Uh, if you bear with me for a second, I will show you what the BIOS looks like. Okay, here we have the Nook all set up. I'm going to uh, turn it on now and go into the BIOS. But first of all, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll turn this on and put the camera as close to the Nook it itself so you can actually hear um, when it's turned on. So, as you can hear, it's pretty much silent. I mean there is a fan noise, very, it's very whisper quiet so really very impressive so if you wanted to use it as a, my, as a media box it's perfect really. So um, let's have a look at the actual BIOS itself and this is what the Intel are calling their visual BIOS and as you can see it gives you some information about the fan speed, the temperature, the voltages that are in use and uh, it's very easy if you, uh, if you have a mouse plugged in um, like I have with a device here, which I'm using this little device here, which is quite nice. It's the Re Mini 8, I think it is. Uh, mouse and keyboard um, connected via Bluetooth. Uh, also acts as a media box as well, with all the media connections, uh, media buttons as well, as you can see up there. Very handy for XPMC. Um, so, yeah, it's quite easy to uh, use the mouse pad. Uh, we can go into things like advanced settings. And see some information about the device. There you go, Intel Core i3 3217U CPU, the ultra low voltage CPU, um, level cache details. So all kinds of peripherals that are you know what's connected up to USB ports, your SATA, your video, what cooling performance is like, um, uh, boots, the processes, everything else really. So. So that's the Intel Nook. Um, I'm going to do another video with the Nook uh, showing off XBMC because one of the main reasons I bought this, which is really nice, is far insofar as um, the GPU that it uses, the uh, HD4000, supports HD audio uh, bit streaming. So you've probably seen, if you subscribe to my channel, I've uh, shown off other videos um, of XBMC HD audio bit streaming using NVIDIA. Um, Ion chipsets and also the HD, the Intel HD 2500 chipset, so which is also an Ivy Bridge chip, um, uh, so based uh, GPU. So I'm going to do the same with this one and check out and see if it works. So if you want to uh, have a look at my channel, you'll be able to see a little bit more of what the performance is like of the uh, the Intel Nook. And um, there you go. If you like the video, please rate and subscribe. And thank you for watching.